guess I should just pick up where we left off. Kind of. So if you remember, we developed a whole pile of tests for when infinite sums converge. I don't want to list them all here. I listed them all last time. Um, we have, so I'll just say them. We, we have the integral test. We have a couple forms of comparison tests. We know about geometric series and P-series. Uh, we have so the, the regular comparison test, the limit comparison test. We know about alternating series. We have this alternating series test. And we have the ratio test. Um, there's a few other more obscure ones that we won't cover, which is fine. And that, that gives us sort of a, an arsenal of techniques that when you have an infinite sum, you want to decide whether it converges, you can do it. So now we, we sort of, I mean, if, if you think about it, um, it's my example here. Uh, so, so say I wanted to know, well, so let's just start with something easy here. So we know this converges because it's a P-series. Um, no, that's a stupid one. What did I want to do here? Okay, but suppose that I multiply this by, say, so this converges P series E equals 2 is bigger than 1, so it converges. And let's start it. And suppose that I wanted to look at instead something like, I don't know. 2 to the n over n squared. So what test, what would I use to determine whether this converges or not? I'm sorry? The ratio test would maybe be useful. So if you try the ratio test, so that means I want to look at the limit as n goes to infinity of the next term over the current term, and if this is, so I'm really comparing this to a geometric series, so if this ratio of the next to the first one is less than one, it will converge faster than the geometric series with that ratio, so that will be good. So in this case, I want to look at the limit as n goes to infinity of two to the n plus one, I guess I'll write it this way, over n plus 1 squared, and I want to divide that by 2 to the n over n squared, so that's a n plus 1 divided by a n. And then I do some algebra. So, well let me just rewrite it in a step that I wouldn't usually write. Uh, n squared goes to the top, like that, so that's the same thing. And then I can simplify a little more. Yes. Yeah, I'll just leave. No. Yeah. Okay, so that equals. So this divides that, leaving a 2 on the top, and then this, well, that's just the limit I can do. So this is the limit as n goes to infinity of 2 times n squared over n plus 1 squared. And then as n goes to infinity, this goes to 1, so this is 2. So what does that tell me? It diverges because 2 is bigger than 1. Divergence. But if instead of the 2 I put a half there, the 
then this would converge. Right? We could, we could use comparison test. This is less than 1 over 2 to the n. Or we could use the ratio test. Right? Should I go through the ratio test or people need to see the details of why this converges? Or is it clear to everyone that this converges? It's clear to her. Anyone else? Does anyone need me to work this out? She does. He does. Okay. So you could use ratio test. If you use the ratio test, Exactly the same, the limit would be a half, which is less than one. So I won't do the ratio test because it's all here. Just everywhere you see a two, write a half. Well, not everywhere because this two isn't a half. But these big twos are all become halves. Or you could compare you can compare uh, 1 over 2 to the n n squared to 1 over n squared. This is less, and this converges. So by comparison, or whatever. So now, if we think about this, what if I change this 1 half to, I don't know, a three quarters. Same business. It still converges because three quarters is less than one, or uh, that's less than that, and so on. So I don't have to keep doing the same problem over and over and over again. I could just decide once and for all. I could ask about this series. Instead of having a half there, or a 2, or anything, I can just do it with an x. So this is just, so I can do this once and for all, and say for what x, Uh, didn't leave enough room, does this converge? So instead of talking about just one infinite sum, I can talk about lots. This is also a function. But let's save that for a minute. Let's just say when, for what x, so for some x values this converges, for other ones it doesn't. Right? Now the answer is for absolute x less than 1, but let's just go through the process here. So the ratio test would be useful here. So we just I'll just go through the work again. If I use the ratio test, I want to look at the limit as n goes to not to a to infinity of the next term or the current term. So that will be, here I have x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 squared. I want the ratio, so that's a n plus 1. And I want it divided by x to the n divided by n squared. That's the value. So now I invert and clean things up. So that gives me, I'll just write the intermediate step. Uh, that. And now I can cancel stuff like crazy. Well, not a whole lot. I divide this into this, and I'm left with an x. And then this limit will be 1, but I'll write that. So this divided by that gives me absolute x. And then I have an n squared over n plus 1 squared. 
And when I take the limit as n goes to infinity, this goes to 1. And I get absolute x as the ratio of the next term to the current term. And so this convert by the ratio test, this will converge if x is less than 1 in absolute value. And diverges. We can read about Tico Brachi. It diverges, so this converges if this is less than 1. In fact, it converges absolutely because we looked at the series of absolute values. Because the ratio is less than 1, so this is faster than a geometric series. And it diverges <coughs> if the absolute value of x is bigger than 1. And if the absolute value of x equals 1, we have to look more. We have no information when the absolute value of x is 1. So we have to try something else. But we got a lot of information. We learned about a whole pile of sums from this here. Right? And so now we have to check what happens. So we have two cases. If x is plus 1, plus 1, because when absolute value of x is 1, we have two choices, plus 1 and minus 1. So if x is plus 1, the series is the sum of 1 over n squared, and we know about that. This converges. It's a p series. If x is minus 1, the series is the sum of minus 1 to the n over n squared. Well, actually, this converges, well, and this converges too, because by the alternating series test, or because this actually converges absolutely, so that forces this. This converges by the alternating series. Right, the limit of the terms goes to zero. It's an alternating series. It's decreasing, so we're okay. Am I going through these tests too fast, or people are mostly comfortable with them? You're comfortable with them. Okay. So that tells us that, in fact, uh, I don't need absolute value in here. The original series, x to the n over n squared, converges for x between minus 1 and 1 inclusive. So this is, some, this is called the interval of convergence. So maybe I should write it as an interval. So this is called the interval of convergence. Because we have a series that depends on a variable x, and we say, for x in this interval, it converges. And for x not in this interval, it diverges. Okay? Um, these intervals always work well. Every interval has a center, because an interval is, you know, from here to here, so there's always a midpoint. And the distance from the center to the edge of the interval is called the radius of convergence. Okay, so 
Sometimes you encounter problems where somebody says, tell me the radius of convergence. So the radius is half the length of the interval. I'll, so here the radius of convergence is 1. Okay, so why is this useful? Well, this is useful for two reasons. For one reason, it just allows us to talk about a whole class of infinite sums at once. But also, this is a function. Right? When we write, I'll just use this same example for a minute, x to the n over n squared, and let's say n equals 1 to infinity, this is, well, when n is 1, I get x over 1 plus x squared over 4 plus x cubed over 9 plus x to the 4th over 16. This is like a polynomial with infinitely many terms. So this gives us a new kind of function. Well, maybe it's new, maybe it isn't. But this gives us another kind of a thing that we haven't dealt with before. This could be some function of x. But this function of x only makes sense for certain ranges of x. This doesn't make sense if x is 3. It only makes sense when x is less than or equal to 1 in absolute value. Because this adds up to a number. We can evaluate the function for x's between plus and minus 1. But for bigger than plus or minus 1, it blows up. <coughs> this, such a function is called a power series. So in general, a power series uh, is something that looks like, well, it's a, something that looks like it has a first term, it has a second term, maybe, usually they don't use A. C? I'll use C. It looks like a polynomial with infinitely many terms. It's not really a polynomial because polynomials stop somewhere, they have a highest power. But a power series, the terms go up to infinity. Now sometimes these might be written like, so this is also a power series, let me just write it. 2 plus 2x minus 1 over, oh, not over anything yet, plus why did I put a 2 there? I don't know. Um, doesn't matter, I'll just leave the 2. 2x uh, two minus 1 squared over 2 plus 2x two minus 1 cubed over 6. 2x minus 1 cubed over 4 factorial, blah, blah, blah. This is also a, hmm? yeah, it should be a 4. This is also a power series. The center, it's just shifted. Right? If I expanded this, then all of these numbers would turn into these C's. I could take the this x minus 1 cubed is x cubed minus 3x squared plus 3x minus 1. And I can put those x squared with this one and turn it into this form. But sometimes it comes up more naturally in a form like this. Okay? So in general, in general, the power series looks something like sum, and it starts somewhere. Usually it's zero, but not always. 
some coefficient, maybe n i, and then x minus something to the nth power. <coughs> so it's a series. It may be centered at some point a, that a might be 0, might not be, and so on. Okay, so these are both examples of a power series. And while this just seems like I'm playing a little game here, these functions are very useful. And they're very useful in approximation, but they're also just useful as ways to describe things in their own right. The issue is that the power series doesn't always converge. So it only has a small, well, it could be a big, domain of definition. But it has a specific domain of definition. It's not necessarily defined for all x's. Notice that it always converges at the center. Right? The power series, if x equals a, then we only get the constant that corresponds to it. Everything else is zero. And in this case, when x is zero, this converges just fine. So the power series always converges at at least one point, the center, <coughs> and then maybe it has some <coughs> So we have sort of several cases. Uh, so so it converges at x equals a always, and then it will converge on some interval a around this number a. This interval could be infinite. So then R is infinity. So R here is called the radius of convergence. <coughs> and maybe at these ends it might or might not converge. I can give you examples where it does and examples where it doesn't, and so on. So perhaps these points are included, perhaps not. Okay? So, uh, so let me work with a few examples of these things. So we did one, not a very interesting example. Say I have something like this, this is going to start at zero. And I want to determine for what x is, should I start with an easier one or is this okay? Is this okay? Alright. So I want to know for what x's does this converge? So sometimes this is phrased as determine the interval. Convergence So almost always in power series unless you recognize it as one that you already know and what we'll be doing for the next 
week or two, with a little interlude in the middle for the exam, is looking at functions as power series and dealing with them and seeing that in power series you can represent known functions that way but also get new functions that way. So here we want to know when does this new this function here make sense? For what axis does this make sense? So that means we treat this as an infinite sum, we check when it converges. So almost always the first thing that we want to do is do the ratio test because that gives us a lot of information without a whole lot of work. So we look at the limit as n goes to infinity of the next term divided by the nth term, take the absolute value. We want to know when that ratio is less than 1. In this case, and just to save a little space, I'm actually going to do a n plus 1 times 1 over a n, because it's easy. So a n plus 1 is what happens when I put an n plus 1 there. And then 1 over a n, I just flip it. And that's the limit that I want to do. And so n factorial, n plus 1 factorial is n plus 1 times n factorial. So this will cancel with that and leave me an n on the bottom. <coughs> yeah? What? Oh, I changed the plus to a minus? Yeah. Minus to a minus two. Just a second. I thank you for fixing the sign. Okay, and so now I can reduce this a little bit. And I'll have a 2x minus 1. This one will cancel all but one of those. And then this will cancel all but one of those. So I have on the top 2x minus 1. And on the bottom, I have n plus 1. And remember, it's n that's going to infinity, so this one's easy. What's this limit? Zero. No matter what x is, this goes to zero. So I don't have to do any more work, because for any x, this limit is zero. That tells me, so this ratio, this is kind of a stupid example, but it's easy. This ratio is 0 for all x, and so for all x, the ratio is less than 1. So that tells me that this converges for every x. So the interval of convergence uh, leave enough room. We put it here. The interval of convergence is all x. So this is the whole real y, minus infinity to plus infinity. <coughs> so this that's my answer. Because the ratio was zero. Okay? So that one was an easy one. Let's tweak it a little bit and make it a little harder. So suppose that instead of having that, um, I want to have uh, so let's put the, now that one's done too. I had one. Why did I lose it? Let's put a, a power there. So let's put like a 5 to the n on the top. We'll take the same thing. We'll tweak it a little bit.
So let me point out, a lot of times, power series involve factorials because they arrive from taking derivatives. But we'll see that later. So let's take almost the same series. Uh, just multiplied it by 5 to the n. That won't help, will it? Uh, I'll get a fifth, it's the same. What, what happened to my example that was interesting? I'm sorry. It was here. <coughs> so, what happens with that one? Oh, this one's okay. Uh, let, me, let me not make it n factorial. Let me just make it. Let's put it in n squared. So, so now what will happen to this? Well, I don't know. We have to check, right? So we do the same business. So I do the ratio test. And so when I take a n plus 1, I get 5 to the n plus 1. 2x minus 1 to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 squared. And 1 over a n is that guy flipped, so I get an n squared on the top and a 5 to the n, 2x plus 1 to the n on the bottom. And so now I want to reduce here. And so this 5 to the n will divide into this 5 to the n plus 1, leaving me a 5 on the top. This, n, this 2x plus 1 to the n will divide into that 2x plus 1 to the n plus 1, leaving me a 2x plus 1 on the top. Minus, well, I keep wanting it to be plus. Should we just change it to plus? We want it to be minus, okay. And then I'm left with n squared over n plus 1. And now I take the limit. The 5 doesn't go anywhere. The 2x minus 1 doesn't go anywhere. The limit as n goes to infinity of n squared over n plus 1 squared is 1. So this is 5 times 2x minus 1. Absolute value. And we want this, so this is just some number, and I want to know when will this ratio be less than 1. Because if the ratio is less than 1, then this series converges. If the ratio is bigger than 1, it diverges, and if it equals 1, I have to work a little harder. So we just do some arithmetic here. <coughs> Multiply both sides by 5. And get rid of the absolute value. So let's get rid of the absolute value. And add 1 to both sides. So when I add 1 to both sides, I get 4 fifths less than 2x, less than 1 and 1 fifth is uh, 6 fifths, and then I divide by 2. x is between 2 fifths and 3 fifths. Now, so, well, let me finish it and I'll come back. Um, so this tells me part of the question. If x is between 2 fifths and 3 fifths, provided I didn't screw up, this series converges absolutely. 
If it's bigger than three-fifths or smaller than two-fifths, the series diverges. And we still have the question, what if x is two-fifths or what if x is three-fifths? But we still have to look at the cases, the endpoints, when x equals two-fifths and when x equals three-fifths. If we use the ratio test on those, the ratio is one, and it gives us no information. We still have to handle those two endpoint cases. So pick one of them. If x is two fifths, then, well, two x minus one is, is well, let me just do it slowly. So that's four fifths minus one over n squared. Four fifths minus one is minus one fifth. Five to the n times minus a fifth to the n is minus one to the n. I think I used n squared, I used n. Oh well. Um, and this is a convergent series. Right? This is an alternating series. So this is an alternating series. Uh, and it converges <laughs> since the limit is n goes to infinity of 1 over n squared. We've we let x equal 3 fifths. Then the series becomes a plus 1 on the top. My integral of the convergence includes both ends, uh, two fifths, three fifths. So that tells us what happens when x is two fifths and what happens when x is three fifths. Um, so let me just remark, if I change this problem a little bit, so I won't do it, I'll just say it. If this is an n instead of an n squared, what will be different? We'll get the same interval, because you can just look, everything's going to cancel nicely. But here I will have an n, which is minus 1 to the n over n. That's still convergent. <coughs> But here I will have a 1 over n, which diverges. So if that's an n there, instead of an n squared, the interval of convergence will be 2 fifths included and 3 fifths not included. Right? So let me just, I'll write it down. That's what I was meaning to do, but I copied wrong, so it doesn't matter. Let's 
So three fifths does not work. It diverges for x equals three fifths. If I change it from an n to say a square root n,
I had a 2 there. How about a 3x minus 2 to the 2n over some random collection of junk. And again, in these power series, the trick, the, the technique is always you use the ratio test first. And just because it's annoying to write 3x minus 2 all the time, I'm going to let you be 3x minus 2 and make my life a little easier. I'm just going to make a substitution so that I don't have to worry about this mess. And so by the ratio test, I want to look at the limit as n goes to infinity, 8n plus 1 times 1 over 8n, that's the value, which is, so here I have absolute value, so since it's an absolute value of minus 1 to the n, forget about it. Do you need me to write it? Yeah? Okay. Minus 1 to the n plus 1, n plus 1. This is now u, so I don't have to write it. u to the 2n plus 2, or square root n plus 2. Because I'm increasing the index by 1. Times, this guy flips. Square root n plus 1, over minus minus 1 to the n, and u to the 2n. So all I did is write down what the ratio is. Now, when I take absolute, so I divide this into this, I get a minus 1, but I'm taking the absolute value so I can forget about the minus 1 entirely. If you like, you can write this as 2n plus 1, which is 2n plus 2. So, however you want to write it, it's fine. Um, so I'm simplifying now. This guy and this guy leave me a minus 1, absolute value kills it. This guy over this guy, I will just write it down. n plus 1 over n. So I took care of that. This guy over this guy, I will just write it down. n plus 1 over square root of n plus 2. This guy over this guy, so it's u to the 2n plus 2 divided by u to the 2n gives me a u squared. Okay, so doing all of my simplifications, a lot of stuff cancels. And now, I can take the limit, and as I take the limit for n large, this is 1, this is 1, and this is u squared. So I want to know, remember u is, is 3x minus 2, I just used it so I didn't have to write it that much, but let's still continue. So I want to know... For what use is this good? So when is, well, it's the absolute value of u squared, which is just u squared. I suppose I could have let u be 3x minus 2 squared, that would have been even easier. But. So, for what u, is u squared less than 1. Because that's when the ratio test converges. Well, that's when u is between plus and minus 1. Okay? But u is 3x minus 2. 
So the center of 3x minus 2, so, I, so that's the same as 3x minus 2 between plus and minus 1. And now I go through the same nonsense again. I add 2 to both sides. And I divide by 3. And so x is between 1 third and 1. Now I still have to, in the remaining 1 minute, I still have to see what happens when x is 1 third and what happens when x is 1. Or when u is 1 and u is minus 1. So for u equals plus 1, my series becomes, where is it, minus 1 to the n and 1 to the 2n power over square root n plus 1. Well, this diverges because the limit is minus 1 to the n. So n goes to infinity. So this diverges. The limit of a n is not 0. I did something wrong, didn't I? No, I guess not. And for u equals minus 1, I get the same nonsense. I get minus 1 to the n <coughs> times minus 1 to the 2n times n over square root of n plus 1, which also diverges. So that means that my interval of convergence is just x between 1 third and 1 and does not include 1 third and 1. Okay? So this, this material is on the exam. It also is on the web assignments due Wednesday. We'll do a little more with it on Monday. And I will review on Monday.